So in this clip, we uh, look at a couple of ideas that we'll need in the forthcoming sections, uh, ideas that were that appear in the book in earlier chapters, mostly in chapter seven. So the first idea is the norm of a vector. So this gives us some idea for um, how big a vector is, the size of a vector. So a norm on a vector space is a function that uh, takes in uh, a vector. And so I'm going to denote it with a, a dot and double bars like this rather than uh, a letter. <clears throat> and so this is a function from v to the non-negative real numbers. <clears throat> and in order to make sense uh, and, and have the kind of properties that we believe the idea of size should have here, we require the, the following. So first off, it needs to be positive homogeneous. So if you have a scalar multiple of v by some scalar lambda, then you need to be able to pull that out in absolute values. Whoops. So positive hom homogeneity. Um, we also require that um, V has magnitude or norm zero, if and only if it's actually the, z the zero vector. So on the left side here, we're talking about uh, this is zero, uh, the zero of the vector space V. This here, this is zero, uh, the number. Um, and then the last one is that uh, it should satisfy the triangle inequality. So this is that the norm of a sum is less than or equal to uh, the sum of the norms. And it turns out that they're equal to when u and v are parallel or, or anti-parallel. And the, the reason for this being called the triangle inequality is it corresponds to the idea that um, if the third length of, uh, or the, sorry, the third side of a triangle cannot have a length larger than the sum of the other two sides. Because if you have like a really long side like this, and then you have like two other short sides, there's no way to close up the, the triangle if the length of that uh, first one is bigger than the sum of the lengths of, of the other two. Okay, so if we have a function that assigns vectors to real numbers and satisfies these, these properties, then we call it a norm. And so some standard examples. Um, uh, on, on Fn, typically the most common one is um, <clears throat> we write down the uh, side lengths in terms of the standard unit basis. And we take their squares, and then we add them up, and then we take the square root. Right, and so that's the usual Euclidean norm or Euclidean notion of, of length. Um, if we are looking at the continuous functions on the unit interval, for example, um, then uh, another common thing to do is exactly the same thing. So we take the magnitude of u at x and we square it and then we sum it up, uh, and then we take the square root. And so that gives us a perfectly good notion of, of length. And um, so sometimes this one is denoted with a subscript two uh, to indicate that, uh, that this corresponds to the, the power two that's going on up here. Um, more generally, you might have the piece norm And so this this is will give you a perfectly good uh, notion of norm. In other words, it'll satisfy all three properties as long as p is at least one. <clears throat> okay, so there's some examples. Uh, another thing that you might do is you could also uh, take the infinity norm. It's called which, and this would be the max value of u. 
on the domain of the function that you're interested in. Um, you can actually prove that as you t if you take the limit as p uh, goes to infinity, you get this one. So that's why it's called the infinity norm. Okay, um, so we have these. Now, what else? Um, oops, a little crooked there. So if V has a norm, so in other words, if, if we've defined if we've defined a norm for it, um, then for u and v, uh, we have a well-defined notion of the distance from u to v. And the distance is just the length of the difference. So the size of the gap between the two is the distance from one to the other. Um, and then uh, we say that an isometry this is an operator Oh, I forgot a verb there. Uh, an isometry uh, is an operator S um, that satisfies, that preserves distances. Uh, so it satisfies the size of V after applying the transform is the same as the size of V before applying the transform. So like I said, this is an operator that preserves distances. And well, maybe I should say preserves norms because that's, that's what I wrote. Um, but it also preserves distances. OK. Um, so then we have a theorem that goes along with this. And that is that um, isometries uh, have eigenvalues with magnitude 1. And um, so the, the interpretation of this is that uh, S is a rigid rotation and reflection. So there's no scaling, there's no shearing, none of that it has something like this. Now, when I say scaling and shearing, you're thinking about Rn, but of course, uh, you can have an isometry in, in infinite uh, dimensional vector spaces as well. Um, so, one other result that we'll need is that uh, S is an isometry um, if and only if um, S adjoint S is equal to the identity. Or in other words, S inverse is equal to S adjoint. So once upon a time, I, I said it's easy to confuse the inverse with the adjoint because they both go in the opposite direction, right, sort of. Um, so the key, the key point here is that if they are equal, it's, it's a very, very special thing, this, this kind of rigid, no, no scaling allowed type of situation. So um, I'm just going to give the sketch of the proof because we haven't really talked about adjoint. So um, the the adjoint is defined 
in terms of an inner product, so if this is dot product or whatever, um, it's the thing that switches over to the other side uh, of the uh, of the inner product like this. Um, now we haven't really talked about inner products, so you can um, I don't know pretend you understand what's going on here. You, if this were given by matrix multiplication, so uh, au dot v, then over here this would be u dot a transpose v, right? Conjugate transpose in the case when it's uh, uh, complex. So s star is defined by this relation. So uh, if we look at s star s u uh, against v, then this is going to be, I can move that s star over to the other side because that's exactly what the definition of, of the adjoint is. And it comes across as just s. Right, so this, this is uh, definition of, of s star. Um, and then um, the definition of isometry then is that uh, this guy uh, gives you the same thing. Or actually, sorry, I shouldn't say definition of isometry. I should say if it's an isometry and there's an inner product, then it has to satisfy this, this condition right here. So this is uh, equivalent to S is an isometry. And the reason why is because um, basically SU, SU is norm squared of SU and UU is norm squared of U. And then for an isometry, uh, these things are supposed to be equal. Um, so I'm clearly sweeping a bunch under the rug but that's the general idea. This this relationship right here though, can be taken as the definition of an isometry if you're in an inner product space. So you'll just have to take my word for that. Um, and so then this is true, if and only uh, for all u and v, yeah, maybe I should say, um, for all u and v in the vector space, if and only if, in fact, uh, s star s is equal to i because, and let me move this, uh, I can stick in this little, actually I'll just, I'll, I'll put it in some strange color here, green, so that we can ignore it. So looking from here to here, um, we have this identity for all u and v, if and only if those two green boxes are equal.